Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hi, welcome to Beyond the Lines. I'm Rusty Komori. We broadcast live on Mondays from the Think Tech Hawaii TV studio in the Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. This show is based on my book, which is also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, achieving greater success and sustaining that greater success, and finding greatness. My special guest today, Chris Kajioka, is a great example of all of this. He is the owner and chef of Senya, which is one of the best restaurants in the state of Hawaii and has gained national recognition as well. Chris is a brilliant chef and leader and has achieved huge success. And today, we are going beyond restaurants. Chris, awesome having you here. Thanks for having me. And also, congratulations on the book. Oh, thank you Work, so much. Working my way through it now. Thank you. Yeah. I feel honored that you're, <laughs> that you're working on yeah. it. Now, you're an amazing chef, and, to say the least. And thank you. When did you first start having an interest in cooking? I think, um, you know, from four years old, um, already, you know, I didn't, I wasn't much of a cartoon guy, so I would always watch uh, cooking shows. Yeah. And, you know, there's pictures of me, um, you know, around the Christmas tree with a chef hat and chef utensils. So, I, you know, I, for some reason, you know, my parents aren't in the industry, but from a very young age, I've always wanted to be a chef. Nice. Yeah. And then what, what school did you go to? I went to uh, high school, I went to Iolani, um, which you know, definitely does not churn out chefs. <laughs> but uh, I went to college in upstate New York at the Culinary Institute of America, which you know, I think is regarded as, um, regarded as a top school yeah. um, and was recommended to me by Roy Yamaguchi. Now, when you were at Iolani, did you play any sports? I did. I, I actually spent my whole life playing baseball, uh, basketball as well. Baseball was my first love. And I played baseball and volleyball during high school. Great. Yeah. And then at the Culinary Institute, mm -hmm. that's in New York. Yes. And you, and that's a very prestigious school. Yes. How did your parents deal with <laughs> you wanting to go to culinary school versus regular college? I think I think any parent um, that says that want you know that that sends their kids to eat honey yeah. and spends that tuition money, I think they'd be lying if they said they want him to be a chef. <laughs> you know, especially. You know, when I was going there, um, my, my, both my parents, uh, especially my dad, wanted to make sure that I was serious about it and, you know, told me I needed to go work in high school for free. And uh, that's kind of what I did to prove to him that, you know, I would take this seriously. And, you know, I was going probably the farthest place away from Hawaii in upstate New York. But, you know, he just wanted to make sure that I was positive. Well, once, you know, he saw what work I put into and sacrificing my weekends as a kid, you know, he was pretty, pretty set. So what was the first job that you, you were working at at that time? Yeah, the first job was, you know, I still remember it, it's uh, Pacific Cafe, it was in the old Ward, Ward Warehouse, and the chef was Jean-Marie Jocelyn. And actually my uncle was his dentist. So he kind of, you know, asked him, you know, my nephew's really into cooking, can, can you let him in the kitchen, you know? And I think I was 60, 15 or 16, and I just remember, you know, I really remember tossing a salad, you know, they, they let me do that, and it was just mind-blowing for me, you know, it was, it was addicting. That's where you yeah. found your passion, you solidified it as yeah, your I think passion. I always knew I wanted to do it, but that kind of, the motion of it, and seeing the kitchen, and the camaraderie of the team, I think, you know, it was, it was like nothing I've ever experienced. Great. Now you have uh, your wife and your son. Yeah. Can you tell me about them? Yeah, uh, my son is four. His name is Cade. Uh, Cade Thomas. He's actually named his middle name is uh, after Thomas Keller. Great. Uh, my wife. Um, she's an extremely accomplished. Uh, she's a banker uh, for Bank of Hawaii, and uh, you know she's extremely supportive of me. Um, you know, I think anybody who's married to a chef needs to be tolerant. You know, I think that's the number one, number one word is tolerant. And uh, yeah, especially with me. <laughs> Maybe tolerant and lucky because she gets to eat great food all you know, the time, I think right? that's a misconception. I think, <laughs> I think anybody, you know, who thinks 
married to a chef. I mean, I'm cooking all day. Okay. The last thing I want to do is cook at home, <laughs> you know? And she's actually a really good cook, so I'm lucky. So that helps. Yeah. So she gets to cook for you. Yeah. I, mean, she does, I don't think she wants to, <laughs> but she has to. <laughs> she has to. <laughs> yeah. Now, you mentioned Thomas Keller, mm -hmm. and Thomas Keller is world famous for being the owner and chef of mm -hmm. French Laundry and Per Se. Yeah. Now, what is your connection with him? So, um, when I first, so when I graduated CIA, uh, I made a list of five places I wanted to work, f work for in my career. And actually the first place was um, in San Francisco, and the chef's name was Ron Siegel. Ron was the first chef of the French Laundry. He opened the French Laundry with Thomas Keller. And I had eaten at his restaurant, Massa's, in San Francisco. And you know, to this day, it's probably one of my top five meals, where you know, completely set the tone for my career. So, you know, I sent a resume, and um, actually, Roy, I was sitting in Roy's office, and Roy was like, "Who do you want to work for?" And I said, "Ron Siegel." So he happened to be a friend of Ron, and literally, Roy just made a phone call, and Ron told me to be there in two weeks. So. I moved to San Francisco, and I, you know, Ron Siegel, um, to this day, is my number one mentor. Um, but he's also the reason why I went to Per Se, is after I was done with him, he made a phone call to Thomas and, you know, got me into Per Se. So it's, you know, it's very, um, I'm very, you know, lucky, I'm very, yeah. to have that, you know, connection, and uh, very grateful, absolutely. So in those experiences, what are some things that you've, you learned? I think uh, we call it the push, um, and I think you know it's it's one of those things that you have a list of you have a list of, of duties that's a lot longer than the time you have. Okay. Right. So it's the push to you know get it done every day, no matter what, um, and you know that every day it becomes a little easier, um, and that's when you know you're becoming better. Um, but just the every detail matters, you know, in a in a Thomas Keller kitchen. So um, how how were those details in the disciplines? I think in the beginning it was very it was very rough for me a transition um, because there's a certain language um, in a Thomas Keller kitchen and I can't really explain it. But the the things that they call you know even a, a kitchen towel is it's it's different. It's just but adapting it's almost military where. You know, they break you down to, 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 they break you down and then they build you back up in their style, you know? And I think that's the best way to do it, to be honest with you, because, you know, I, the kitchen is run with precision. Um, everyone's accountable. I think that's number one. And everyone's really proud to be there. I mean, I, there's not that many restaurants that everybody really buys into, you know, the philosophy of it, the food, right? That's what makes a restaurant great. Yeah. For sure. Now, every chef, they ultimately want to own their own restaurant. Yep. Now, when did you realize that you were ready to open up your own <laughs> restaurant? It's like having a kid. Uh, I don't think you're ever really ready. <laughs> um, I think you get to the point where you feel you've had enough training. Um, I didn't, you know, I, I had opportunities to open earlier. I, you know, I accepted Vintage Cave when I was 28, and I felt like, I learned everything I could from my mentors, and I wanted to take a chance, you know? Um, but, you know, a lot of people nowadays open 25, 26, and, you know, maturity-wise, I wasn't there, and uh, I'm glad I waited. Um, but you don't really ever know that you're ready, you know? I think if you, if you think you're ready, there's so many other things that you don't know, you know? And, and, it, and it happened, you know, yeah. when I opened Senia, you know? Uh, there's still things that we're learning to this day, you know? Well, now Senya has been open for a year and a half. Mm -hmm. It's one of the state's top restaurants. It's yeah. amazing. How did you choose the name Senya? So actually my partner, um, Catherine Namora, who's our general manager, it was one of, having a name for a restaurant is very tricky. Um, you know, I think Google, <laughs> honestly, Google is like a big, I would say everybody uses Google. Um, <laughs> You know, just Googling names and meanings. And Xenia is actually an offshoot of a Greek term, Xenia, which is with an X. Okay. And it refers to hospitality. It refers to strangers coming together. Um, and we thought it was perfect because, you know, Anthony, my partner, is from, from England. Catherine's from L.A., and I'm from here. And we're bringing it all together. 
um, to hopefully exude a sense of hospitality. Well, you definitely do that. And you just mentioned Anthony. How did you and Anthony Rush connect? So Anthony, you know, we worked at Per Se together, uh, and he was actually my sous chef. And uh, one of the most gifted, gifted cooks, um, one of the most gifted cooks uh, there is, you know, I've ever worked with. Um, and we just really got along together. I think there's, there's a few people in your career that you just, you know, bond with, yep. um, and you just work really well together, and he was one of those people. Yeah. yeah. No, you guys make an amazing team Thank together. You. I got to tell you, Chris, I absolutely love Senya. <laughs> Thank I you. love Senya. Thank All you. of my friends do too. Thank you. Can you tell me why you believe Senya is so successful? I think it starts with our employees. Um, I think every one of them buy into what we're doing. Um, you know, going back to the Thomas Keller thing, I think if everyone believes in, in the food, in the hospitality, in the leadership, um, in what we're trying to give everyone, I think that's where success is. Um, we're very lucky to have really good employees, and we're lucky to have people who have been there from the beginning, um, you know, want to pursue, you know, getting better and better every day. I mean, you know, without, without them, me and Anthony would be a lot busier <laughs> during the day doing everything else, you know? Sure. So, and you just you can't do it without without those people. Also, I think we we believe in the details. Um, we believe in thinking about every everything. Um, you know, we sacrifice seat count for booths and comfort, um, which you know in a, in a restaurant financially you want seat count. Yeah. Right. Also, yeah. our kitchen is fifty fifty with the dining room, which is not really a good sign. But you know, I think um, we feel like. You know, people are comfortable, you know, they'll eat more food or they'll drink more. Um, so we feel like we sacrifice that for comfort and hospitality. I agree with you. Fairly recently, mm -hmm. my friends and I, we, we went to your private dining room mm -hmm. upstairs and had an absolutely great time. The yep. food, the, the wines, absolutely amazing. And then downstairs you have the main dining room yep. and then you have the, the counter. Yeah. How did you guys come up with the ideas for all of that? I think, um, you know, the, the two concepts downstairs, we wanted to, I think people had a perception that two really fine dining chefs are coming together, it's gonna be fine dining. And I think we wanted to completely go away from that perception and make it approachable, um, family style, share, you know, kind of how we like to eat when we go out. But we also needed that outlet to Kind of execute what we've trained for for the last you know 15 20 years you know so that's what I think the chef counter really affords us um, so it's fun you know there's some days you know we have a PDR who's doing a TC menu we have a full house downstairs and with the counter that's full it's rocking you know and but the energy is like infectious you know it's like there's nothing like that adrenaline I, I yeah. agree. I mean, wherever you go, the private dining room, the main dining yeah. room, or the counter, you cannot go wrong. Yeah. Now, you are a, 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 you're a brilliant chef. Thank you. And your dishes are exceptional. How do you keep coming up with these exceptional <laughs> dishes? Uh, I mean, I think, thank you for saying exceptional. Uh, we don't always, you know, we, 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 we want to make every dish exceptional. Um, that's always the goal. I think we, we follow seasons, because that's really what we trained. We trained in New York and San Francisco and, and London, and uh, it's very seasonal there. You know, Hawaii's not very seasonal, but we still try to follow that guideline where, you know, we're not using tomatoes all year. Uh, we're not using corn all year. Um, you know, we're, we love pumpkin during, during the fall, you know? Yeah. So I think that's where a natural progression is that the, the dishes will always have that you know, Senia, I guess, core, but the ingredients will always change. So I think that's where we can separate ourselves. And Chris, you, before Senia opened, mm -hmm. you guys were featured in the New York Times. <laughs> I mean, national recognition. How yeah. did that make you feel? I think, you know, obviously it was a huge, it was huge for us. It was huge um, PR. Um, it was very unexpected, to be honest with you. Uh, but. You know, we had such a long lead up to the opening of the restaurant that, you know, 
it helped us, um, but it also created a sense of expectation that, you know, I think I struggle with uh, day to day. Um, you know, people come in from far uh, to dine with us. Sometimes they come in for one night to dine with us, and you know, it's we need to kill it every day. Oh yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> It's, it's daunting sometimes. No, and you guys are doing it, and, and it's just amazing. I look forward to going to Senyo all the time. Thank you, thank you. Now, Chris, when we, we're gonna take a quick break. Yeah. When we come back, I wanna talk to you more about success yeah. and leadership. Okay, okay, great. You are watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii with my special guest, Chris Kajioka. We will be back in a quick minute. Aloha, my name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea is on Think Tech Hawaii every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join me where my guests talk about law topics and ideas and music and Hawaiiana all across the sea from Hawaii and back again. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. Welcome back to Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My special guest today is Chris Kajioka, the owner and chef of Senya, which is one of the best restaurants in the state of Hawaii. And today, we are going beyond restaurants. Chris, yeah. Chef Alan Wong, mm -hmm. Chef Roy Yamaguchi, Chef Mavro, they're famous chefs here, Absolutely. right? Now, how is your relationship with, with those guys? You know, Roy, Roy is a mentor. Um, I've come up in his kitchens. Um, I think people, you know, choose, choose three routes coming up. You go to Mavro, Allen, or Roy, right? <laughs> so there's a, those three schools, right? I came up with Roy, and, you know, Roy has always been extremely gracious with me. Um, you know, maybe it's because I went to his alma mater. Um, Maybe because I always asked him too many questions, um, but I think he knew that I was a guy who was never going to settle, um, and he knew that I wanted to explore. You know, um, Chef Allen again. It's you know he's uh, he's got a huge legacy here. You know, you look at around around the state, how many chefs have come up under Allen. Um, that that defines him. You know, and you know he's a James Beard winner as well as Mavro. Mavro. You know, I've, I've always admired Mabro and his style. Um, he's done fine dining for so long, and that's so difficult, you know? So um, I admire all three of them. Yeah, and they all have those high standards, mm -hmm. and they, they're just consistent with yeah. everything they do. Yeah. And they have some signature dishes. Mm -hmm. Are you on your way to having <laughs> those sig signature dishes as well? Yeah, I think... Um, you know, when I was younger, um, kind of ego uh, sets in, and you know, you're like wondering why these why chefs have dishes that they cook constantly for 20 plus years. You know, um, and you know, I always wanted to change, change, change. But then, you know, you come up with a dish that everybody loves and everybody comes in with. You kind of want to <laughs> hold on to those dishes, you know, and and hope that you can strike magic again. You know, I mean, now it's like. God, if I have a dish that everybody loves, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's just a lot harder, you know? Yeah, no, I yeah. get that. Now, Chris, let's talk about my book, Beyond the Lines. Mm -hmm. I know you have it. You're working on it. Yeah. Tell me how you're liking it so far. You know, I love it. I love the, the, the keys, you know, how you break it down. Um, I think it's, you know, obviously you've had a ton of success. Um, and, you know, leadership... Great leadership doesn't always um, result in success, you know. And I wish I wish it did every time, but you know, I think you find a way to combine both um, and really, you know, 
take us take us in your shoes and and you know I I enjoy it because you know as a, as a as a new business owner you know it's you know juggling so many things per day you know it it, it becomes overwhelming but you know you sit back and you you know you, you go through it and it's like okay I can I can do this and it's yeah. rewarding after it, the day it is rewarding you know some days are more rewarding than others <laughs> yeah. um, usually saturday night after knowing we have sunday off yeah. it's really rewarding <laughs> but yeah great um you're very successful. You're 35 years old, mm -hmm. okay, and you've experienced so many things already. Mm -hmm. um, what do you, I want to know, Chris, how do you define success? That's a really good question. Um, I think some people define success as money, um, financial. I, I describe it as having a legacy. Um, you know, having people who work under you, who learn from you, you want them to be better than you. Um, you know, and, and you know, I've, I've had a lot of cooks have worked for me that have gone on to amazing restaurants and, and high positions, and that makes me so proud. You know, that's, that's a direct influence on what I brought to them and what they brought to me. Um, so, you know, if, if I can, you know, churn out, you know, superstar chefs, that's everything, you know. I mean, that's everything to me. That's that's the legacy, uh, legacy in the community as well. Um, you know, I take a lot of Sundays and I do a lot of charity dinners, um, as well as legacy for my son. Yeah. Um, you know, I, 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 it's not secret. I want him to be a chef. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and I, I always tell him, "What do you want to be?" You know, and he. Uh, a few days ago, he was like a firefighter. <laughs> and I was like, what else? You know, he's like, a chef. I was like, okay, well, you can be a chef first. And then, you know, so, you know, I'm not one of those parents who want to guide them away from, from I, I want him by my side, you know? Yeah. yeah. So is he cooking some dishes for you right he now? He is the most picky, not interested in food <laughs> at all. I mean, you know, it's, it's, you know, I hope hopefully one day he'll he'll get into it. But you know, my mom always says, "Don't force him." You know, but I'm like, oh, I just want to. You know, he's got a restaurant he can take over. Yeah. You know? so, it's so easy. Yeah. So, yeah. No, that's good. Now, I want to ask you, Chris, why do you think you're successful? I think I've been able to train under amazing mentors, as well as my family. I have a, I have a very good core, a foundation. Um, me and my dad are very similar. We're very hardworking. Uh, I don't think we say a lot, um, but I think that hard work, um, coupled with you know amazing training uh, advice, um, I think. I mean, I'm. I hope. I think I'm successful. Um, oh, you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I think. I think those things. It, it was a path for me, and I took it, and that's the reason why I'm where I am today. It's not, it's not me. It has nothing to do with me. It's everything to do with the people who surrounded me and gave me, you know, their insight. I think. Yeah, and you know, you're so passionate about doing what you do as mm -hmm. a chef mm -hmm. and an owner, and it just—I mean—it's so clear to me that because you have that passion, you mm -hmm. found your passion. Mm -hmm. That's leading you to finding your greatness, which you found, yeah. and now you're helping everyone else find their greatness. Mm -hmm. I think that's very inspiring. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I want to ask you, Chris, that, you know, what has been your greatest obstacle in achieving your success, and then how did you overcome that obstacle? You know, I think we all, we all get into, you know, during, during training, um, you know, most people work in, in great restaurants for 10 plus years. Yep. Um, and it's the grind, you know, the grind of it. Um, you know, working 80 hours a week, barely being able to, you know, cover costs, you know, your, your rent, eating. Um, that gets daunting, yep. I think. Um, I was lucky. Uh, my dad my dad always supported my, my passion. Um, but I think you know, the grind of it, the mental grind, thinking, am I ever gonna be a chef? Or am I ever gonna be able to lead a team, you know? Um, 
And that's just day to the day to day grind of, a, of being a cook. Yeah. You know, and um, also you know now that I'm an owner, I think employees, you know, managing personalities, it's the hardest thing. If I could just concentrate on the menu, you know, our menu would be changing like 30 times a year. <laughs> you know, but it's like juggling personalities, juggling. Um, people's schedules, vacations, um, you know, it's any a week. It's never ending. It's never ending, you know, and that's, you never turn off, yeah. you know, so that's what excites me, but that's also what stresses me <laughs> out all the time, yeah. Now, you're only 35, like mm -hmm. I mentioned. What do you, what are you hoping to aspire to achieve in your future still? You know, I want to do more projects, um, but I want to do projects that, are meaningful and um, are all different. Yeah. Um, you know, I want to help if you know our young cooks want an outlet. I want to give them that outlet. Um, but I want to do projects that I'm like really passionate about. You know, not projects that like we've always said we'll never do another Senia. You know, Senia is like. To me, it's the magic of me, Anthony, and Catherine, and all yeah. our employees. It's very singular. You know, it's very. You can't. You can't. You know, bring that somewhere else. That that magic is in that building. Um, so we'll never do another Senia. You know, we'll do maybe other concepts. Um, but I just want to be proud. Like, I really want to be proud of what concept we're doing, and not it be cookie cutter or, you know, something that we're not. You know completely behind, I guess. So what what do you feel gives you ultimate fulfillment and happiness? I think, number one, our employees are happy and they're proud of what we're doing, you know? Um, that's number one. And I think another gauge of, I guess, success is financially sustainable. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I applaud Roy, Mavro, um, Alan for being around for so long. I mean, we're, we're gonna hit two years in December. Wow. Um, and <laughs> I can't imagine doing it 18 more years. 20, <laughs> year, 20 years is incredible, yeah. you know? Um, but that's what you wanna be. You wanna be that restaurant that's, you know, the, the standard, you know? You wanna be the Liha Bakery. You know, you wanna be those places, that high steakhouse that I went to as a kid and they haven't stopped getting better. You know, you still remember how good it was, you know? Um, well, you're you're definitely on your way. Okay? We'll see, we'll see. You're definitely yeah. <laughs> on your way. So, I mean, so how do you keep innovating? How do you keep predicting what people would want? I think it's, I mean, you know, the short answer is, you know, we eat out, we go to cities, and we see what's going on, you know? Um, I think that's key to anybody is, you know, eating out and, figuring out what everyone else is doing, um, as well as, you know, we're always thinking about food, yeah. you know? Um, that's what I love to do. You know, it's not a job for me. I get I get paid to do what I love. Not many people can say that. Yeah. Well, Chris, I have to just say that it's been an honor having you Thank on you. my show today. Thank you. And Senya, absolutely phenomenal, Thank exceptional you. food, like I said earlier. Thank you. And I can't wait for my next visit there and really <laughs> want to thank you for your time and thank coming you. on to the thank show you. today. It's an honor to be here. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, check out my website, rustykomori.com, and follow me on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. I hope that this show will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.